I'm getting very bored with uh, interpretation. <laughs> um, I've been doing it for a couple of years now. I really, I think I've hooked into something here. It's just hard to show it. It's a, uh, you kind of, it's fringe. You're really out there. I want to say this, uh, how I kind of see the spiritual path right now, how I look at things. And it's probably good to use an example. I want to do, let's do this. Let's just pretend for a minute that we find a tree and this tree has life. It can talk. It's self-aware. It's still a tree. It's stuck there. It has roots, but we can go talk to it. Pretend we're using our imagination. And this tree tells us it doesn't feel good. That it does. It's, it's afraid. It looks out in space and wonders what is there. It knows it's going to die. And that it is afraid of uh, being cut down, being burned, something. At any rate, um, this tree is just mentally not all right. And it comes from the ground, though. It comes from a source. And it's asking us what we do. And we can look and we see that, you know what, you're looking out into space. You're not looking at your roots. You're not looking at your seeds. You're not looking at your point of origin. You're looking outward. You're not looking from where you came from. You're looking outward into space. You didn't come from there. We might be going there, but don't look there for answers. Look for where you're coming from. Look for the roots of it. In fact, the very nature and the quality of our capacity to search is based on all of us starting from that point of origin. But where are we looking from? We're looking from a point in life of mental perception that's based in our life experiences. And that those life experiences are what causes the nature of things for our life. That's how I kind of feel we humans are, that the vast majority of people are that tree looking outward, wondering what is out there. We don't come from out there. We come from the inner space, not outer space. When we're spiritual seeking, we should not be looking to the stars. We should be looking to our brain cells. We need to turn inward to find where we come from. We don't know where we're going, do we? We think we do. But what, are, what, what do humans do? Think of evolution. Think of evolving. What are people worried about? Are they worried about the way they feel? They're looking out, out, out. The danger. Everything is out there. What we need. Where our life is. The physical life is all about out there. The physical life is all about there. That's the physical world. Then we go look for the spiritual world. And what do we do? We keep looking out there as if the spiritual world comes from out there too. The spiritual world, the energy world comes from a source that everything comes from. We should be turned inward to look at for that, for our answers and not outward. Now, another thing I realize is that you proceed with what you can really sink your teeth into. And that, uh, boy... That's hard to say. I, I, let me let me describe that a little bit better because everybody would be listening to this going, okay, I, I get what you mean. But I, here's what I want to say is that most people don't sink their teeth into anything. They think they do. When I was a kid, I was born and raised in a country that was a Christian country. So that's what I was raised with. If I had been born and raised in Saudi Arabia, I would have been raised as a Muslim. If I'd been raised in... India, I'd be a, a Hindu of some f sort. You, know, you, you look around the world and you realize on a larger scale, I just showed up where I, where I am. You know, thinking that God put me here specifically to have this experience in the midst of all kinds of people who can't get it right is about as stupid as I can think of. That's just not even trying to think. That's just, so, I just care about me. If my, as long as my feelings are okay, I don't want to think about anything else. I don't even want to know that stuff. Yeah, what happens when you start looking at things is your security becomes shattered. Because life is a whole lot more complicated than what we think. But we pretend like it's some simple thing and we run along with blinders on. There's not enough people that look inward. The vast majority of humans look outward. They are... We evolved to be afraid of things that are outside of us. You look at people, what do you see? People that are afraid and have made up some kind of a fantasy about something being out there without ever looking at the source. I don't get it. Well, I do. I just, fr I'm frustrated that humans are mostly that way and that there's not a damn thing we can do about it. You just watch them and go, God. 
Why can't humanity get this? I'm not talking about theists and atheists. Those are two big kids on the same teeter-totter. I'm talking about the spiritual reality of where we come from and is there something beyond? And if there is, shouldn't we start with what we know instead of what we wish and work from there? Let's start with something solid and grow that into where do we go with it instead of start off with, I know what the everything is, and then sit here trying to figure out why it's not working. I, uh, humans work that way. It, it's, it's, what is it? Just, yeah, I want to be, I just want to be happy now. I don't care about the future. I don't care about other people. I don't, I don't know what it is, but that's pretty much it, I think. It's tribal. These are things that I see in place um, that seem to be acting out, but that, you know, as time has gone on, how do you explain what's going on? I, and I look at it this way, that as time has gone on, we've developed language, we've developed culture, we've got different rules. We're not, we're not acting like um, tribes anymore. We're now in societies functioning in, in a different way, giving opportunity, creating, um, creating opportunity fairly for everyone instead of just, you know, the group alpha males and whatnot. It's, it's, a, it's more fun for us to do that. We all get an equal chance and we all get to be ourselves. So that's a good thing. But how do we circumvent then the, I, the, you know what? Ignorance is bliss. The less you know, the more it's easy to justify your belief based on something that is actually a limited belief that you think is and are holding on to as the only possible right belief while maintaining, in, in most cases, the idea that even learning about something else is evil or satanic or something like that. So, so you've shut yourself off from, from learning, from awareness. And you know what? Here's, here's how, the, how frustrating this gets. I have a family member one time and I was doing this comparison. This was long ago, so I still was not really on top of it. But I was seeing that Jesus and Buddha were teaching the same thing at that point. I didn't know the degree. But at any rate... Um, so the family member told me that they're not at all the same, that they know about Buddhism and that what they know is that Buddha taught that life is suffering and that they're supposed to be beggars on the streets and that they're not about that at all. And you realize this is a person that swears they know about Buddhism and just is what? They don't know a damn thing. They don't. <laughs> it's completely wrong. But uh, when you when you're told what the answer is, you're going to be that person. When somebody tells you the answer and you say, bullshit, I'm going to go look for myself. Well, <laughs> welcome to a rare group of people that are going to be frustrated. Jess, I wanted to say something else because this is probably a part of something you need to hear. I can remember times in life younger thinking that something is wrong with me. I don't know why I can't fit. It just doesn't work. I'm, I'm awkward. I'm gangly. People think I'm nice on one hand and then weird on another and, you know, aloof and stuck up and all kinds of things. And I'm like, I don't even know how to talk to people. I'm pretending to stare at a picture, you know, or something at a party because I don't even, hmm, uh, somebody asked me later, you looked at that picture a lot. What was it about? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> You're not even looking at it. You're just trying to escape somehow. You go, you go grab serving trays and start helping because nobody pins you down for a conversation. And you can't figure it out. And later on, what you realize is, you know what? Your brain's wired different. You're not supposed to be part of the group. You're supposed to be part of the outskirts. You're a different kind of person. You are. And that's important to understand because it can be very frustrating early on. I can remember trying to fit, trying to... It's like, well, I don't know what clothes to wear. I don't know. I was so unable to just function because I didn't know. We don't know how to fit. That's It's not our world. We don't care about who made our pants or who made the wheels on our cars. We don't care about that stuff. Uh, yeah, we live in a a simpler world of more reality, though. Anyway, so that's cool. Yeah, if you feel any awkwardness, that's uh, um, this is all normal stuff for 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 certain people, and it's talked about in the material. <laughs>
If you're catching on to this and hooking into it, may, you know, you're probably one of them. Most people won't be, though. We're told that again and again. And we see it. And we can probably see why. Ignorance is what is killing humanity. I mean, time goes by. That's going to do it, too. Everything is on a, a life cycle. Or life cycles. There are cycles. I don't know how things work beyond my consciousness right here, right now that I can speak to. Beyond that, you get into that supernatural world of fluff talkers who tell you exactly what life is and can't show you anything except that, you know, you realize what you're hearing is their wishful thinking with conviction. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I, I, I need other discussions sometimes. I am, um, I feel like I'm really alone doing this. <clears throat> a friend of mine told me recently, he said, yeah, you're kind of doing stuff nobody else is really doing. So you're not going to probably get a lot of support. And that, and the interpretation that said, what I'm seeing is that that interpretation is based on that very idea that we come from a source internally, not externally. The, the interpretation of the material takes us inward that way. It is not the outward path. It is an inward path to understanding. And uh, guess what? People aren't going to get there. And I find that to be distressing for all of humanity. There's a lot of anger and hatred out there right now in the name of really stupid things. Because people aren't getting it. Because they think something out there. It's all here. We're animals. We can't figure it out. We're pretty full of ourselves. Anyway, <laughs> fun video. Yeah, I don't know what to do. Help, somebody, please. Anybody else want to sit at the fire? Grab a bottle of wine. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Anyway, all right. Short video. Just had to get that off my chest. I, I, it, it, um, uh, I enjoy the exchanges. I enjoy when things, it's like, oh, here's something to hook into. And then you go right back to, okay, plodding along. And I know that I have not yet successfully shown. Um, I, don't, I don't think that I have confidently shown that creation myth first and then the mono myth. I was getting ready to in Genesis and there's that one chunk in there that I can't figure out what it is. It doesn't look like it fits to anything in the human psyche. And I just don't know what it is, so. Playing with that, playing with that, but uh, I, I don't know if I should keep even doing that. The the Babylonian stuff, I, I don't find it there. I can keep doing that, but I think the interest is just not there in it. I see, in the Babylonian material, there's a repetition of things going on. Marduk is going to take care of the past. They're going to just take the whoever had the, the fate, the tablet of fate in the past, now gives it to Marduk. Our new selves have taken over. We're going to build a new tower, a new city. Life is going to go on. This is about us tearing down our earlier selves, rebuilding a new self, imprisoning our old past hurts, and moving on with life. That's it. There we go. It's the secret, except that instead of that stuff is called, that stuff is just called so what? It's the secret only this time. That, that so what stuff is the most important thing. You take care of that first, then everything else is going to work okay. You don't ignore that stuff and then try to work your way around it. There you go. That's the truth and the reality of what's in the material. However, you know, again, again, there's still things in the material that I don't recognize that, you know, that Genesis chunk right there. What is that? Maybe there's, you know, maybe it's a directory. Maybe there's some other secrets in there that I don't have access to. I can't get it. Um, we need to bounce more ideas off and figure things out. But it is all, yeah, um, it's, it's hard to describe it. That is it. You know, when Jesus says many are the ways looking outward that lead to destruction, but, you know, not many people are going to, and most people are going to go there, the many are going to go there, but very few will take the, the, the singular path. This is nothing new. We're seeing this very thing right here that the vast majority of people are looking outward to something out there. The idea that th this is where the idea of spiritual, not religious comes in. I define religious really as that looking out there. You're praying and there's something out there, some sort of an, a supernatural entity 
spiritual doesn't do that. I mean, yeah, spiritual turns inward and says whether there's spirit or not, or I, we don't start there. We start here. We start with what, what we are, where we came from. All the teachings are that way, how you came about and how to change you and what you came about, that you're simply a product of your environment. So if you're a Christian or a Muslim and you grew up someplace somewhere and that's the way you are, then you know what? You, you're not seeking. You're not knocking. You're not getting out of that. You are, you're stuck where you came from. That's not global. There's one reality. And if you were raised in one place by accident, why the hell would you think you're the right one? You, that's arrogant. You got to step back and go, wow, what makes me so special? When the ego is so big, you're not going to look. So, um, yeah, humans are, the way minds are work, they're different. We are not born the same, not at all. There's some significant differences. And uh, I, don't, I don't know that there's any way to manage them. It's kind of, it's uh, <laughs> kind of scary to look too close. You know what I mean? All right. Well, I just wanted to talk about this. I guess it's it's something different. The interpretation over and over and over again. It's like, boy, I'm I'm even, mm, I'm getting tired. Of that. <laughs> I need to show the pattern, and, or I need to. I don't. Yeah, I don't know what. I don't know what. What do I do to make this? You know, I think to myself, what do secret societies know? What you know? What is truth and reality? What do, what do masters of um, you know, early Jewish, you know, the, the uh, people know this, you know, people know it. I don't, when was, when was, uh, when was King Arthur written? It was way after Jesus, right? I, was, I don't, I don't know the timing frame, the time frame on that, but you know what? King Arthur is what? It's a, it's also a monomyth. Arthur is split from his brother. The divisions are happening. The He's the one that has the capacity to pull out the sword. Nobody else does. He's the chosen one. And they all stipulate destinations, right? We'll just jump to the end of this one. You might be looking for a better flow in the Tao. If you're in Taoism, you're looking for Nirvana in Buddhism, the kingdom of heaven within in Christianity, or what are they looking for here is the Holy Grail. <laughs> all the components are there. The Romans know this template. They know what the hell is in Jesus' work. Somebody there knows better than Christianity. They know the template is there. They're working with the template. They're using the template. They're, they're putting it in other material. Here we are. The, the way that, the way that, uh, the way that Jesus's ministry was structured and written is actually the search for the Holy Grail, written in different analogous forms and in a genre of religion that suddenly people say, all those myths, those are not right, but this is true. Oh. By the billions. See that? All right, well, what do I do? Anybody got any ideas? <laughs> what should we talk about? See you in the next video. I'll think of something. Take care.